I made a video, I want to say like what, <laughs> Wednesday or something, talking about firm banks. And I'm just going to expand on that a little bit, extend on that, if you will, because I want to talk a little bit about what I call extended banks. Just my term, don't know if it's the proper term or not. But as I talked about the other day, <coughs> then I'm like, let's come over here. Let's come over here. Maybe this is my good side, I don't know. Um, like for a cross side, well, a cross side is 12. One, two, three diamonds away, I go 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2. And it's going to be pretty close. From three diamonds to 1.2, if I hit it right and all that, it's going to, it's going to be pretty close. It's not, it's not as automatic as sometimes I make it look. Just the way it is. So from four diamonds down, which would be about right here, it would be 1.6, which is about right there. That right there. Those are regular cross corner shots. What I call extended cross corner shots are the shots that are going along these kind of lines. Now I don't know these, okay? I have things that I use to try to well, to try to learn them and get them honed in. But for right now, all I really have is just estimations, guesstimations, as far as what is what they're at. One of the things that I learned a long time ago is that from this pocket, not over here where this fake diamond is, but from this pocket, I can go halfway between these two diamonds. And it's a pretty, uh, pretty reliable shot. If I want, if I go, if I have to have a line off of this diamond, where do I bank it over here? And right here. So for every diamond I come along this way, I come down this way a half diamond. So that means from here to this diamond, if I have a bank on that line, and hit it right, and I get lucky, then a shot can go in. And the same thing again, off of this time. Two diamonds over, now it's going to be two half diamonds down this way. So one, two, so it's going to be right at this halfway point. When, you, when I start getting into this area here, especially, it's the Banks are just so picky and very susceptible to even, even the slightest little bit of changing English and things like that. The cleanliness of the balls makes a big difference. This six ball ends up being close enough to this rail that it's probably going to be sliding, which is going to make it want to come up short. So usually, if I have a shot like this, I'm going to make a little bit little adjustment, either with English or, or with cut, to try to open the bank up a little bit more. Because it's likely to hit about here. Now we'll just see. I'm just going to shoot it, and we'll see what see what happens there, right? Okay. So it happened to go in. One issue that you have with this kind of shot as well is on that shot, the six ball went into side pocket about like this, about at this angle. And one of the things that I have is my little guesstimations are to put it in the center of the pocket, not over here where it really should be, but at the center of this pocket. And guess what? There's a point that's very often in the way. So sometimes you have to kind of adjust for that. But so many, well, so many shots in pool are, are feel and you, you know, me, I'll get like estimations, guesstimations, um, and then eventually, I don't really use those anymore. 
as long as I'm, you know, playing often enough, okay, this looks right, and shoot. And usually that's as good as any system or whatever that I might have had. If I shoot it off enough, I'm going to see it. Just continue that, though. If I want to go one, two, three diamonds over, I'm going to go three half diamonds. One, two, three. So from this diamond to this diamond. Six is getting off and down close to the rail now. But sometimes the shot will go in. So susceptible to speed, English and, and all this. And all that shot I've jacked up a little bit. I usually have issues with that. But those are how I shoot the extended cross sides. Those are how I estimate the extended cross sides. Usually I can shoot this one from this corner to this one and a half and kind of get a read on the table if it's playing long or short, or whatever, balls are dirty, balls are slick, whatever. Usually I can do a decent job of that. Now I want to talk about the extended cross corners now. So my limit on the regular cross corner, the one, the one I talked about the other day, was from here, which is eight diamonds up this way to right here to 3.2 diamonds up that way. So this was kind of the limit that I was at right here, was to here. If I hit it right, then sometimes it goes in. Send your cross corners will be if the cue ball is down here and my bank angle is something like this. These are rather tough for me. I I haven't figured out a good, I haven't figured out anything better than 50-50, even at best. But I do have to estimate stuff and try to get a feel for the table. So what I do, well, first of all, from anywhere in here, the shot can't be made at firm speed. Because from anywhere in here, the side pocket over here is in my way. So I'd come all the way out to here. I'd come all the way out from this diamond to this fake diamond right here, which is this one. I can't hit this fake diamond because I'm going to hit the side rail right before the side pocket. But a lot of times this shot will come in or go close or miss by a mile like that we just did. Since these shots are so picky, now, and I've overcompensated. I put just a touch of right English on that shot that time and came quite a bit short. Whereas just shooting a normal went quite a bit long. The, the shots are very, very susceptible to, well, to English. What I do for my estimation on these extended cross corners is, so I started here, then that, this is my starting line. For every half diamond that come this way, I come down this way half time. Pretty easy to see and figure out what it is that you want to do. Uh, much harder to do it and get the ball going the hole. So let me get my let me get my caveman. I showed this in the last video as well. So I'm gonna put him at the, right at the halfway mark. Halfway between diamonds is where this caveman is. So like what I was talking about was from here to aim at that fake diamond is this line right here. From this half diamond right at my caveman, see, that's how good my concentration is tonight. From this diamond right at that caveman to the halfway point, sometimes. Sometimes the ball goes in. Yay! I'm going to come over another half diamond this way. That means another half diamond down this way. So that's from here to again right at my caveman. I realize in reality, a lot of times you're not going to be shooting these shots at firm speed. A lot of bank pool players shoot a lot of banks at firm speed. 
but it gets to be a point where I think they become a low enough percentage that a lot of players will end up shooting them softly, <clears throat> more pocket speed. That way, if I shot that that ball and pocket speed and missed it, it would still be sitting down there somewhere. Cue balls up here, there's a tough shot ball. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about firm veins. So we're going to come nearly half time and down this way. And the half diamond, is that right? Half time, two, three. From right here to the caveman, <laughs> same deal. I really feel like this is the one I just shot. Sometimes they go in. Come over another half diamond, which takes us to here. I get into the same situation I was in on the extended cross sides. The object watch starts getting very close to this rail. And so it's very likely that it's going to be sliding when it hits this rail, which is absolutely going to affect what happens. At this shallow of an angle, coming in with this shallow, this object watch is liable to slide down this rail before it releases and lets go. So this bank is, is likely to go long. And so just shoot it and Try to get it through it. Well, what's this table doing tonight with these humidity conditions and all that? What's this table doing? And that I said, it went long. So on this shot right here, in theory, I would make an adjustment. I'd either cut this ball very slightly to my left. I usually prefer on the shot like this for these very small adjustments to put just a touch of inch. And I'm talking about maybe, maybe a half a tip of inch maybe a half tip of English on the shot, realize the same way, and sometimes the ball goes in. You could really, you could really get carried away, and you could come down another half time. From right here. This, to me, is Oh, it just showing off shot. I, I, I don't think anybody's ever received this shot at firm speed. I really don't. But if they know it really well, or a trimmer or somebody, the trimmer should turn everything at firm speed. Um, then, sure, okay. It's the same, the same like guesstimation that works. For every, you start out here, and for every half time when you come this way, you come down a half time. And it's a good, it's a good guesstimation for those extended cross corners. So I covered the extended cross sides and the extended cross corners. Um, the other kind of shot which I struggle with is what I call strength extended straight backs. And these, well, quite frankly, they make me mad because I feel like I should be better at them than I am. But as I discussed the other day, I'm going to straight back this 12 into this pocket. I go off this line to 0.8 diamonds down there, or to 0.4, sorry. From this line to 0.8, from this line to 1.2, from this line to 1.6. So they're just regular straight back. I start where my bank line is along here. Some days I'll hit it. At a certain a certain way, and then the next day I missed it by a foot, doing it the same way. So what I want to do here right now is I'm going to put this guy at 1.9 diamonds. So I'm setting this up on my diamonds. So 1.9 diamonds this way. <coughs> From right here, off of this off of this guy. If I hit it right, you get it lined up right, and the stars are aligned right, then a lot of times the shot will go with it. For some reason, these shots are pickier than everything else put together for me. I mean, sorry, just, you know, when I miss that ball by, I don't know, three or four inches, I'm liable to make, either make it this time or miss it by a foot and a half. So 
I'll put it in. So from here to 1.9. Next thing. And just go to two. So I'm just I'm going at at this diamond right here. From right here, from this diamond. So touchy and so picky, and this is absolutely the one where I'll make it and think I know what the hell I'm doing, or I'll miss it and, and look like I've never shot a ball before in my life. Um, these are just so picky for me. And I don't have to figure it out. Tonight, I feel like I'm figured it, figuring it out, but I haven't. So I'm going to go to 21. 2.1 diamonds this way. From right here. So this is pretty easy so far, right? I mean, I was 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2, 1.6, and then 1.9, 2.0, and now let's try try 2.1. Where's the freaking object ball at? Damn it! Just not prepared. Just not prepared. Let's try this again. From this diamond to 2.1 diamonds. All right, so that's cool. Hey, maybe I'm on to something. Maybe it's just going to be 0.1 diamonds all the way up. I can never be that lucky. What I have found is that once I get here to this fake diamond, you might think it would be 2.2 diamonds. In my experience, that has not been the case. We'll see if the balls make a liar out of them right now. Not like that. Two diamonds. Yeah, see the balls will make liars out of them. So tonight, started to align in a certain way, so I can do 2.2 diamonds from here. Okay, let's see if it's 2.3. Just going to move him down. Yeah, 2.3 from here. I'll be astonished. I'll be astonished. Just standing here looking at this and, and the fact that I've banked some balls in my life, this looks like there's no freaking way in hell this ball's gonna go in. This looks like it's gonna hit about here. But I've been wrong before. When I was married once, so no, I was wrong. Yeah, that's about where I went. All right, so 1.9, 2.0, 1.6. Two point two apparently tonight, but this is definitely not. I mean, what did I say? Two point nine, two zero, two one, two two. This is not two three because I missed that ball by quite a bit. So let's try. Let's try it like two point five and see what happens. Right. One two three four five. Right on there. From this time to 2.5. This looks better. This looks like this is a doable shot. So many shots, like I said, I already said, um, they're just played by feel and what looks right. To me, this one looks right to 2.5. And I still meant to quite long. Quite a bit long. Might have mishit it. Don't know. We're going to try it again and see what happens. Yeah, quite a bit long. So it's not 2.5. Let's see if it's 2.6. Go with him. It's not 2.5 tonight. Tomorrow it might be 2.5. Tomorrow it might be 2.4. It drives me crazy. These shots. These extended bunch really drive me crazy. Okay, so he went in. When I'm really trying to map all the shit out, I shoot balls more than once. 
but this is just for a damn video. So that was 2.6. I'm, I'm just guessing at this point, right? But I think what I want to do is I'm going to put him in 2.8 off of this diamond. See how that looks. That looks like it's going to go long. But the A-ball is getting pretty close to the rail. And I'd like to look and see um, where that ball is. I forgot to look and see. Don't really learn anything if you don't pay attention to shit, David. Okay, a little bit long. So let's do 2.9. This is this is total guesswork, and I know that it's frustrating because I've gone through all of this before, and I thought I had my extended straight backs mapped out pretty well. But then the, the next time I try them, as I said, I, I look like I never shot a ball in my life. Because that's just the way it works. And I think I have these shots figured out, or at least getting close. Still going. Still going. Crap. If anybody ever watching this comes up with something better, for these extended straight backs, yes, I would be very happy if you shared that information with me. For this time, I'm just going, I'm just going to go straight into Steinman. From this Steinman to this time. Pretty elevated, age pretty close to the rail. Shot so sensitive on speed. I might call that close enough for government work right there. Might. It's a tad harder than I missed it by half a dime. Just a tad harder. It's a tad softer this time. Um, so, damn, sensitive. Um, what the, that was that, right at the third dime. So from here to the third dime. Coming. I don't feel like shooting over balls. From this diamond, it's about here. But I don't have any other balls. That's what makes you mad. And I don't feel like walking all the way down there to get another ball. But from here, what has worked for me in the past is shooting at this halfway point between these two diamonds. And that's what the fuck. You're going to make me get object bars. Not just slave driver. From here to there, I mean, look how close all this shit is. You play this shot by feel. You don't play this shot by where's the caveman or by how many diamonds over you are. You play this shot by feel. And some days it goes in, and some days you miss by a foot and a half. Just happened to be even at the, the caveman who was at 2.5 diamonds over. The only other extended shot that I am aware of that nobody shoots would be straight back in the side. Now, I, didn't even, I didn't even cover him straight back in the side. I didn't even cover him. Banking this five into the side, for example. Nobody shoots these shots at firm speeds. But if for some reason they wanted to, and they were down here and they felt like doing it, that's exactly the same as the extended cross side score. You have a starting point for every diamond, you come over a half time. Like I have a starting point from here to one and a half. If I felt like shooting this ball and I had to allow for a little bit of the fact that the center of the pocket is in here, so I have to make it come a little bit short. 
but I can shoot this. It's never going to go in, right? But the the lines are the same. I'm going to come up the diamond. I'm going to come over a half time. Go from here. That. Yeah, no one shoots this stuff. Burn. Now it looks like I missed out by a lot. But what it did is it went straight at the center of this pocket. It just happens to be a rail in the way. She, these are shots you shoot left field as well. Don't, don't get on these shots and go, oh, from here to here at firm speed it'll go in. Don't do that. Well, I don't do that. I, I apologize. I'm not supposed to be telling people what to do and all that. I don't do that. I, and I don't think most bank pool players do that. And most bank pool players are going to shoot this shot softly and they're going to just base it on the field. What well, it looks like it might go in. And then they'll shoot it and see if it goes in. And that ball went straight to the center of the pocket. I just missed it because of the damn rail in the way. I needed to, I needed to basically try to bank it at this point off over here. And I didn't. But this will not go down in history as one of my best videos. It probably won't be my worst. Um, I just kind of wanted to just cover these, extend straight back to firm speed because I hadn't done it before. Actually, when I made the video the other night, I planned to do that, but that was like a 25 minute long video and I just felt like it was getting, it was too long. So um, I've covered it now. I don't have, all I have to go by on these extended shots is I guess what experience I have and the, so I have slightly educated guesses on a lot of the stuff. Um, the stuff that I covered last week, I've done a lot of research on that and for, for my stroke work, they work pretty darn well. This extended stuff, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Especially those straight backs. Those extended straight backs, they're horrible for me. They really are. I guess I'm done now. Later.